Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is on Mukshida Karaji of all days uh, the Perfection of Renunciation, Chapter 18, cha- uh, verses 52-53, inclusive. Ah, okay, fine. So it looks like what we'll do is we'll just read the Sanskrit one line at a time, then we'll go to the English. Okay? Please repeat. Siddhim prapto yatha brahma Satap no tini bodame Samase naiva kunteya Nishtajana shyacha yapara Bhudya vishudaya yukto Dridatmanam niyam yacha Shabda dim vishayam chaktva Ragadve show vyudashyacha Vivikta sevi lagu asi Yatavakaya manasaha Jana yoga paro nicham Vairagyam samupashritya Ahankaram bhala dharpam Karmam krodam parid gragam Vimucha ni marmo santo Brahma bhuyaya kalpate Okay, translation, Srila Prabhupada. Text number 50. O son of Kunti, hear from me how one who has achieved this perfection can attain to the supreme perfectional stage, Brahman, the highest state of knowledge, by acting in the way I shall now summarize. Purport, Srila Prabhupada. Please repeat. O son of Kunti, learn from me how one who has achieved this perfection can attain the sup- to the supreme perfectional stage. Brahman, the highest knowledge, by acting in the way that I shall now describe, summarize. Right, text 53, 50, 51, 53, purport first of 50. The Lord describes for Arjuna how one can achieve the highest perfectional stage simply by being engaged in his occupational duty, performing that duty for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One attains the supreme stage of Brahman simply by renouncing the result of his work for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. That is the process of self-realization. The actual perfection of knowledge is in attaining pure Krishna consciousness that is described in the following verses. Yes, so what's that previous perfection? The perfection is... Yes. So, Krishna is talking there about the highest knowledge. Uh, Sorry. One who has achieved this perfection can attain to the supreme perfectional stage, Brahman. So what is that perfection as in the previous verse? One who is self-controlled and unattached, who disregards all material enjoyments, can obtain by the practice of renunciation the high state of freedom from reaction. Yes. So that's muksha. Right? He's saying the perfection 
who achieve this perfection can attain to the supreme perfection or stage Brahman uh, by acting. So Muksha, Muksha is here described in terms of material reaction. You see that? Freedom from reaction. So your Mukti, Muktivad, when you're not under the effect of the material energy. Uh, that's the material modes. So, beyond that though, there is the supreme perfectional stage, Brahman, the state of highest knowledge, which means um, to realize Krishna. Right? So it's one stage of perfection to get free of attachment to Maya and the reactions thereof. But the real perfection beyond that is to become uh, in knowledge, uh, that means perception of the transcendental realm. Okay? So now Krishna is going to summarize that process. And that's what 51 to 53 is. So, I'll read it then we'll repeat. Being purified by his intelligence, and controlling the mind with determination, giving up the objects of sense gratification, being freed from attachment and hatred, one who lives in a secluded place, who eats little, who controls his body, mind and power of speech, who is always in trance, and who is detached, free from false ego, false strength, false pride, lust, anger, and acceptance of material things, free from proprietorship, and peaceful. Such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self-realization. So this is a further explanation, this verse, of the mukti condition. Right? You see? He's purified by his intelligent, controlling the mind, right? Giving up objects, so he's not attracted to sense enjoyment. He's freed from the dualities, attachment and hatred, friends and enemies. He's not in that platform. He's living in a secluded place, so he's renounced from material association. He eats little, controls his body, mind and power of speech. So he's not living to eat, he's eating to live, as the yogis say. He's always in trance, so this is the real point. He's uh, avoiding association, controlling his body, but he's in trance. So that means his mode of goodness. Mode of goodness will give you trance. And who is detached, free from false ego, and because he's in trance, he's detached from the material coverings of false ego, false strength, false pride, lust, anger, acceptance of material things. Free from false proprietorship and peaceful. Such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self-realization. Please repeat, being purified. By his intelligence and controlling the mind with determination, giving up the objects of sense gratification, being free from attachment and hatred, one who lives in a secluded place, who eats little, who controls his body, mind, and power of speech who is always in trance and who is detached free from false ego false strength false pride lust anger and acceptance of material things free from false proprietorship and peaceful such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self-realization Right, so let's see the purport by Prabhupada. When one is purified by intelligence, he keeps himself in the mode of goodness. Huh? Thus one becomes a controller of the mind and is always in trance. He is not attached to the objects of sense gratification and he is free from attachment and hatred in his activities. Such a detached person <coughs> naturally prefers to live in a secluded place, but he does not eat more than he requires. And he controls 
the activities of body and mind. He has no false ego because he does not accept the body as himself. Nor has he a desire to make the body fat and strong by accepting so many material things. Because he has no bodily concept of life, he is not falsely proud. He is satisfied with everything that is offered to him by the grace of the Lord. And he is never angry in the absence of sense gratification. Nor does he endeavor to acquire sense objects. Thus, when he is completely free from false ego, he becomes non-attached to all material things. And that is the stage of self-realization of Brahman. That stage is called the Brahmabhuta stage. When one is free from the material conception of life, he becomes peaceful and cannot be agitated. This is described in Bhagavad Gita 270. Apuryamanam achalam pratishtam samudram apa pravishanti yavat tavat karma yam pravishanti sarve sa shantim apnoti na karma karmi. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled, but is always still, can alone achieve peace, and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Yes. So this is the expansion of that first stage of perfection that Krishna is talking about to Arjuna. Um, the purified person, the sadhaka, he gives up all material attachment by becoming attached to Brahman. Uh, you see, this verse uh, doesn't give the full picture. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean which is ever being filled but always still can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. So that is a yogic principle, yes. The material body is always going to be agitated for eating, sleeping, mating, defending. But the person, how uh, the peaceful person doesn't try to uh, answer those desires, especially in an unregulated way. Rather, he is putting his mind on Krishna. This is the important point. Because it's what this is a bit like the the Buddhists or the voidist. They think yes, it's all illusion. I want to become nothing. So they want to stop all material desire. But they become frustrated. Like Prabhupada mentioned there in the purport, the sadhu he doesn't become agitated or angry in the, in the absence of sense enjoyment. Why? Because he's getting a higher taste. It's as simple as that. If you try to become a Buddhist or a Vairagi, yes, for some time, and there's stories about this in the Vedas, even Shubhari Muni, right? He was a great yogi. He was meditating for thousands of years. Ramtal is there. It's on the old riverbed of the Jamuna. And um, he was meditating there. There's a Ashwatthama tree for a thousand years, they say. But also he had the ability to meditate within the Jamuna. He used to feed the Jamuna little balls of, um, I mean the fish, little balls of um, atta. So he used to meditate in the Jamuna at one point, but he saw two fish uh, mating, so he had the desire, maybe I should get married. So he went off to the king and asked the king, right? For fifth Mandala. Mandala. How many daughters did he have? Yeah, 50. So, <laughs> of course it wasn't Kali Yuga, they were all well behaved and obedient wives. <coughs> oh, sorry, lady. <laughs> no, 50 wives, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's quite something to look after. Of course, if you're a, <laughs> a great renowned sage, and that is the fact that, um, that is also Prabhupada makes that point, right? That um, 
when you run after her, Maya Devi is like the donkey. You know, the, the male donkey runs after the female donkey. And the female donkey kicks the male donkey, trying to have union. So, but Prabhupada makes the point, however, this is just like the Maya Shakti. As, as soon as you try to enjoy the Maya Shakti, then suffering condition comes. This is also in Prahlad Maharaj's teachings, because you have to work hard for your sense enjoyment. You have to perform that austerity. So, Maya's like that. If you try to enjoy, she'll beat you. But if you are um, detached, as we've just seen described in these verses, if you are detached from the Maya Shakti, then Maya will come to you as a servant. If you are detached and meditating upon Krishna, uh, then Maya Devi will think, I'm also the devotee of Krishna, let me help this devotee. And we see that with Prabhupada, it gave all facility to Prabhupada. So, this very important principle. But then Subhari Muni, um, by their renunciation, they develop all sorts of mystic powers. <laughs> So I believe he changed his body, didn't he? He changed his for a younger version. He swapped his youth with... No, no. No, that was a different person. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... That's what I'm saying. So Maya Dave, oh, you get all mystic powers when you, you're not running after Maya, being kicked by Maya. But when you want to perform some service or you're a great yogi, then Maya will become your servant. You'll get, develop all sorts of abilities and you'll become handsome just by choice. And you have no problem maintaining 50 wives. <laughs> so. Uh, this is an interesting point of the material energy, that we are in the uh, suffering condition. Why? Because we're chasing after Maya, and Maya is trying to give us the hint. Don't chase after me. Don't chase after me. Whack. <laughs> no, I love you, Maya. Whack. <laughs> so we're, we're being beaten like that donkey on the bank of the Jamuna chasing down the other, but she's just kicking. But then if the donkey stops, then, the, you know, anyway, we can't go too far with the analogy. <laughs> but the, the point is, uh, we should gain understanding, at least for myself, as a sadhaka, I should gain understanding from these words, right? Inspiration. Uh, that we've just been reading how Prabhupada explains that he eats little, he controls his tongue, his anger, and his this, and so on. And he's always in trance because of mode of goodness gives you trance. So, we should not be distracted from that position. Right? We may be doing okay now, going Mangalati, chanting our rounds, following regulative principles, studying, doing so much service in the temple, this and that. But we should be very careful that we don't become distracted. We chase after the donkey. Huh? So, of course, Shubhari Muni, uh, he's a great devotee. We shouldn't criticize him. Um, there's also other, there's Bharat, King Bharat. Also, he gave up his renunciation, right? He fell in love with a deer. He was in the forest. And then Maya kicked him. He became um, Jad Bharat. He became a deer and then he be was so careful to not be distracted by the entreaty of the material energy that he became Jad Bharat. Jad means dull. 
So he didn't want to be distracted from Krishna, his meditation on Krishna, mode of goodness. So he acted like a, a retarded person. But his intention is not to act like a retarded person, his intention is that he shouldn't be distracted from his higher pursuit. So this is a very important point. Uh, we may be well situated, but we should learn from the Shastra the danger. That as soon as we try to enjoy, Maya won't think, oh, he's a nice devotee. He'll still kick you. <laughs> so, uh, this whole chapter is to make us strong in our renunciation. One purpose is, we've read, it starts, what is sannyas? The question is asked. What is chag? What is giving up things? What is renunciation? And then we've had discussions about um, the mind, the body, words, action in knowledge, action in ignorance, and renunciation, and so much knowledge. And this is all to give us detachment. Uh, what is that verse? Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Priyoditi Gyaniti Yeshu Vairagyam Gyanam Chayad Ahoyadagam That you get causeless detachment from knowledge. If you engage in devotional service to Vasudeva, then you will get detachment. So, yes, so there's two ways to do this detachment, and Prabhupada always made that division. That there is the Vedic system, like Shubhari Muni meditating, being renounced, so on, and making progress. Or there is the direct process, and that is to become immediately attached to Krishna without performing all these difficult austerities and meditations. And the center of that is to hear and chant, right? To hear and chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So in Kali Yuga, by grace of Gorni Thai, this uh, chanting of Hare Krishna is empowered to give us detachment, to bring us to mode of goodness, and to make us attached to Krishna and detached from Maya. So this is our process. Yes, the description of the Vedic days. Um, that's throughout Bhagavatam and this and that. And these important principles are there, detachment. But in Kali Yuga, uh, we don't live so long. We're not. Uh, Subhari Muni, I believe he was meditating there in Satchi Yuga. So Satchi Yuga people live a hundred thousand years. Can you imagine? So, Subhari Muni. Uh, he was doing his yogic system, but in Kali Yuga, a hundred years. Uh, and uh, we ha can gain full realization of Krishna by grace of Gornitai. So this is also a very important point, uh, that we are faced with great opportunity. Uh, but we have to have what's called loilam. That means eagerness. That is, uh, Lord Chaitanya, he's opened a marketplace. He's selling the holy name, right? We all, you all know. And what is the price of buying the holy name? Loilam, the desire. So we must chant uh, with desire to become attached to Krishna and detached from Maya. Krishna, he fulfills the desire within the heart of his devotee. So we must always remember that, that um, not become distracted, even in the temple, by desire for power, position, salary, uh, respect and honor. This is also Maya Shakti. Anything distracts from the pure realization of the individual self towards Krishna is just distraction. Uh, if you take sannyas, I'm not pointing the finger at anyone, because you want someone to wash your clothes and give you donations, then Krishna will arrange that. But then you'll find that I'm not self-realized, that's all I'm getting. I'm getting my wa clothes washed and I'm bored as hell. <laughs> no, 
we have to adopt, uh, and if I become president, I think I'll be happy in this way, or if I become in this charge of this department. But actually we should realize we should have the mind fixed on, as Ramananda Roy explained to Lord Chaitanya, the highest goal. Not just becoming good at Varnashram, or good at this, or to have this, do that. We should uh, desire, eager for Krishna Prem. That should be the goal of all works. Do you understand the point? Because if you think, oh, I want to build a temple. Okay, Krishna will help you build a temple. Very good. But, so that's your desire being fulfilled. And no doubt you've got some punya and bhakti sukriti. But, that, your desire wasn't Krishna Prem. Huh? Lord Chaitanya, he's broken open the f storehouse of love of God. He's saying, who will take these fruits? Who will take this love of God? So if we go to Lord Chaitanya, he said, no, that's later. Now I want to build a temple. Oh, Lord Chaitanya, no, that's later. Now I want to become famous as a renunciant. No, I want to have thousands of disciples. Keep your love of God. I have, so, it's gone in such a big, oh, I want a good salary so I can secretly watch television at night, something like that. <laughs> or, and I want this, and I'm coming. But, so you may be thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, maybe one of thousands living in the temple. And everybody in the temple may have his own desire. But the only intelligent person in the temple is the one who is de desiring, ah, oh, Krishna Prem. Where is that bhava? Where is that prem? When is that love of God going to awaken in my heart? Huh? This is the songs of Narutam Das Thakur, correct? This is the songs of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. These are the ecstatic words of the great Acharyas. When will I gain Krishna Prem? Huh? So if that's the desire, then Krishna will fulfill that desire. But if you want to learn 200 slokas, then Krishna will teach you 200 slokas. He'll give you the memory. But that's not love of Godhead to have 200 slokas. It's not love of Godhead to be pre temple president or a renunciant or of thousands of disciples. Krishna will give you, if you want to be a big pandit in Sanskrit, Bengali, huh? then Krishna will give you that. Then Maya has distracted you from the central point and that is what nitya siddha krishna prem sadukabhanai shravanadi sudhachitte karide udai the krishna prem is in the heart and if you want it it's there but how do you get it out by making the awakening of that your desire your exclusive desire do you understand the point because Krishna will give you what you want. If you want a salary, if you want a position, if you want thousands of disciples, if you want your clothes washed, then Krishna will arrange. Because you're doing his service. He's saying, Yeyitam Mam Prapadyante. All of them as they surrender, I will reward. So if they surrender and they say, Oh Krishna, give me Krishna Prem. You've broken open the storehouse of love of God. And you're anxious to distribute it. So please give me one of those. Because we are spirit souls. We're conscious beings. We have choice. We have an ability to control. So that is the choice we should adopt. And that is what we get from Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sava Shastra Hoi, Lava Mata Sadhu Sangha, Sava Siddhi Hoi. And if you look at all the Bhakti literature, there are many people, they weren't very big uh, Moonies, or they weren't big Chatriyas, or they weren't this, or they weren't that, but they were just simple people, right? What does Lord Chaitanya say? Patita Pavana He Tu Tavavata. He's coming for the fallen people. And what is, what is, our side is just to desire that love of God. Huh? 
and we get the conception from the great sadhus from the their writings from bhakti vinod thakur his ecstatic bhajans from uh, naratam dakur his writings um, from the 10th canto the words of the gopi gita um, all the bhakti literature they all give us a vision of that and that's what we should adopt in our heart and that is the conclusion of bhagavad gita and here now krishna is summarizing that uh, he's giving uh, he's summarized all the knowledge he's given in the 18th chapter action in the mode of goodness knowledge in the mode of goodness three modes all this so that's okay detachment but now krishna we won't get into it krishna will yes will explain how you can use your mind in such a way that your only desire is love of godhead and that he sums that up i'll read it yeah why not having talked so much right so krishna is saying right now you detached so you're muktivad you're liberated one who is thus transcendentally situated right so you detach now from all the you've studied the bhagavad gita detachment so you're thinking yes i should fix my mind on brahman one who is thus transcendentally situated at once realizes supreme brahman and thus becomes fully joyful he never laments or desires to have everything you see he's uh, fixed on the brahman krishna he's not distracted he wants the krishna prem he wants to become gopi bata kamalaya das das anadas he's maintaining that fixed concentration within his heart he's equally disposed to every living entity in that state he attains pure devotional service unto me right so mukti is one perfection yes but then you want to become a pure bhakta on top of that one can understand me as i am the supreme personality of god had only by devotional service bhakti mam right and when one is full consciousness of me by such devotion he can enter into the kingdom of god right so he's adopted krishna as the goal and only through bhakti though engaged in all sorts of activities my pure devotee under my protection reaches the eternal and imperishable abode by my grace so this is the real point ye to mam prapadyante you've adopted you've adopted krishna and krishna prem as your goal that's what you want i want krishna prem so then krishna takes you back to godhead you're endeavoring in your own way to the best of your ability but don't think it's on your own krishna will arrange everything in all activities yes you see krishna is explaining the same thing in all activities just depend upon me and work always under my protection in such devotional service be fully conscious of me right if you become conscious of me you will pass over all obstacles of conditional life by my grace if however you do not work in such consciousness but act through false ego not hearing me it's interesting if you don't hear krishna in the heart you lack through false ego you will be lost that's very interesting that not hearing me in the heart yes yeah, so as soon as we try to enjoy we can't hear krishna in the heart we turn away from krishna if you do not if you do not act according to my direction and do not fight then you will be falsely directed uh, maya shakti by your nature you will have to be engaged in warfare so there's krishna again don't be distracted from krishna prem under illusion you're now declining to act according to my direction but compelled by the work born of your own nature you will act all the same the supreme lord is situated in everyone's heart o arjuna and is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated on a machine made of material energy o skid of bharat surrender to him utterly by his grace you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme eternal abode thus i have explained to knowledge still more confidential deliberate on this fully then do as you wish to do free will is always there 
Because you are my very dear friend, I am speaking to you my supreme instruction, the most confidential knowledge of all. Hear this from me, for it is for your benefit. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. So that's, if you choose Krishna and not Maya, you become dear to Krishna. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Right? So that's it. It's okay to become detached through knowledge and understanding how the modes dictate our particular form of words, knowledge, action, renunciation and so on. But that is the springboard for chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So, and how do you get that? What have I just explained? Desire, by desire. You just adopt and you get the vision through studying the words of the great Acharyas, the bhajans they've left behind. You get a vision of that Krishna Prem and you maintain and you beg Krishna, right? Beggars, what did Lord Bhakti Siddhanta say? He said, we've opened a, a crying school. You know that? He once said that. We're all here to cry for Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So it's all very simple actually. Because we are spirit soul, we have desire, but we're in the material energy uh, because we're desiring the material things. If you want the spiritual things, then you go to the spiritual energy. It's simple as that. So you need good association and good knowledge uh, to get that uh, idea. And so look, I thought this would be good also to read. Yes. Because um, this will also, because we want to fill, f follow what Prabhupada is teaching and Krishna is teaching here the perfection of renunciation. So, in the Bhagavatam, this will also help to make you fixed in renunciation of any material desires. Just remember that next time you want to enjoy by eating too much, the donkey will kick you. <laughs> no, but so remember that, but also here is Rishabdev teaching his sons, right? Rishabdev, um, he renounced the kingdom, big king giving up the kingdom. And he called all his sons and gave them teachings. And these were very, very interesting and very complete. Fifth canto, it's uh, fifth uh, chapter. Lord Rishabdev told his sons, my dear boys, of all the living entities, Prabhupada used to quote this all the time, right? One, ah, of all living entities who have accepted material bodies in this world, one who has been awarded this human form should not work hard and night simply for sense gratification, which is available even for dogs and hogs that eat stool. One should engage in penance and austerity, right? We spent weeks studying different types of penance and austerity, tapasya of the word, mind and body, so on. to attain the divine position of devotional service. So again, same point is there. Become liberated from maya by not chasing and become self-satisfied, atmaram, and then change, attain the divine position of devotional service. This is very important. So it's very nicely the way Rishabhdev is saying. It's a divine position. It's a divine, it's very desirable, right? divine, right? If you say somebody is divine, it's a great compliment, isn't it? So it's a great, wonderful thing. 
divine position of devotional service. By such activity one's heart is purified and when one attains this position he attains eternal blissful life which is transcendental to the material happiness and which continues forever. Very similar to what we've just read here, isn't it? No, verse number two, one can attain the path of liberation from material bondage only by rendering service to highly advanced spiritual personalities. Now this is a very important point because we didn't mention that earlier. Devotional service should be done as an offering to the divine personalities. That means the Uttamadikaris, the Paramahansas, the Mahabhagavats. One should have Mahat Sevaya. Uh, Mahat Sevam Dwaram Ahor Vimuktes. Uh, so we perform devotional service as an offering to Guru. We desire Krishna Prem as an offering to Guru. We perform our chanting and mala as an offering to Guru. It's all save above. This is actual bhajan. Only by rendering service I'll advance. These personalities are impersonalist devotees. Whether one wants to merge into the Lord's existence or wants to associate with the personality of Godhead, one should render service to the Mahatmas. For those who are not interested in such activities, who associate with people full of, fond of women and sex, the path to hell is wide open. The Mahatmas are equipoised. We've just been reading all that. They do not see any difference between one living entity and another. They are very peaceful and are fully engaged in devotional service. They are devoid of anger and they work for the benefit of everyone. They do not behave in any abominable way. Such people are called Mahatmas. Number three. Those who are interested in reviving Krishna consciousness, increasing their love of Godhead, do not like to do anything that is not related to Krishna. They are not interested in mingling with people who are busy maintaining their bodies, eating, sleeping, mating and defending. They are not attached to their homes, although they may be householders, nor are they attached to wives, children, friends, wealth. At the same time, they are not indifferent to the execution of their duties. Interesting point. Such persons are interested in collecting only enough money to keep the body and soul together. When a person considers sense gratification the aim of life, he certainly becomes mad after materialistic living and engages in all kinds of sinful activity. He does not know that due to his past misdeeds, he has already received a body which, although temporary, is the cause of his misery. Actually, the living entity should not have taken on a material body, but he has been awarded the material body for sense gratification. Therefore, I think it not befitting an intelligent man to involve himself again in the activities of sense gratification by which he perpetually gets material bodies one after another. As long as one does not inquire about the spiritual values of life, atato, brahma, jignas, one is defeated and subject to misery arising from ignorance. Be it sinful or pious, karma has its resultant actions. If a person is engaged in any kind of karma, his mind is called karmatmaka, colored with fruit of activity. As long as the mind is impure, consciousness is unclear, and as long as one absorbed in fruit of activity, he has to accept a material body. When the living entity is covered by the mode of ignorance, he does not understand the individual living being and the supreme living being, and his mind is subjugated to fruit of activity. Therefore, until one has love for Lord Vasudev, who is none other than myself, he is certainly not delivered from having to accept a material body again and again. Even though one may be very learned and wise, he is mad if he does not understand that the endeavor for sense and gratification is a useless waste of time. You're going to be kicked by the donkey. Being forgetful of his own interest, he tries to be happy in the material world, <coughs> centering his interest around his home, which is based on sexual intercourse and which brings him all kinds of material miseries. In this way, one is no better than a foolish donkey, I mean a foolish animal, yes. 
The attraction between male and female is the basic principle of material existence. On the basis of this misconception which ties together the hearts of the male and female, one becomes attracted to his body, home, property, children, relatives and wealth. In this way one increases life's illusion and thinks in terms of I and mine. When the strong knot of in the heart of a person implicated in material life due to the results of Paksha action is slackened, <coughs> one turns away. <sighs> From his attachment to home, wife and children. In this way, one gives up the basic principle of illusion, I and mine, and becomes liberated. Interesting. So the basic principle we have to avoid is I and mine, aham mameti. I'm this body and these things belong to me. That's the central core of renunciation, overcoming that. We can understand that, right? So we can meditate on that tonight. I'm not this body and all this paraphernalia, it's not mine. Uh, I and mine and becomes lip. Thus one goes to the transcendental world. Right? So li liberation on one side, going to Krishna on the other. Oh my sons, you should accept a highly... Ah, this is the Mahat Sevaya. Rishabh Dev Prabhu is explaining this uh, again. One about Mahat Sevaya. One should accept a highly ele elevated Paramahamsa. He doesn't say anyone. He says highly elevated Paramahamsa, a spiritually advanced spiritual master. Right? He makes that very clear. Paramahamsa, Mahabhagavat. He doesn't say serve a neophyte, materialist or a wacky person. In this way you should place your faith and love in me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You should Detest sense gratification and tolerate the duality of pleasure and pain, which are like the seasonal changes of summer and winter. Try to realize the miserable condition of the living entities who are miserable even in the higher planetary systems. Philosophically inquire about the truth. Then undergo all kinds of austerities and penances for the sake of devotional service. Right? So you become liberated. But you must think that devotional service is something different from just liberation. Give up the endeavor for sense enjoyment. Control your mind body and engage in the service of the Lord. Listen to discussions about the Supreme Personality of Godhead and always associate with devotees. That's what ISKCON is for, to associate with devotees. Chant about and glorify the Supreme Lord and look upon everyone equally on the spiritual platform. Give up enmity and subdue anger and lamentation. Right? Forget the past that sleeps. Right? Abandon identify... Oh, yes. Ab ad excuse me. Abandon identifying the self with the body and the home and practice reading the revealed scriptures. Live in a secluded place and practice the process by which you can completely control your life, air, mind and senses. Have full faith in the revealed scriptures, the Vedic literatures and always observe celibacy. Perform your prescribed duties and avoid unnecessary talks. Always thinking of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, acquire knowledge from the right source. Thus practicing Bhakti Yoga, you will patiently and enthusiastically be elevated in knowledge and will be able to give up the false ego. You realize Krishna. As I advised you, this is number 14. He's talking to his sons again now. My dear sons, you should act accordingly. Be very careful. By these means you will be freed from the ignorance and desire for fruitive activity and the knot of bondage in the heart will be completely severed. You become liberated. For further advancement, this is the point, you should also give up the means. That is, means you should not become attached to the process of liberation. That's Nimagra. You just do sadhana bhakti mechanically, uh, but you don't know the purpose behind it. So then, that means you give up 
the practice of sadhana bhakti when you become a liberated soul, and often that's the case. Somebody with spontaneous love of Godhead, he may be seen not, uh, unless he's acting as an acharya like Prabhupada did, but he may be acting in ways that are beyond rules and regulations. Good example of that is, um, huh? Yes, I was just thinking, yeah, Vamsi, he used to chastise his deities. Why aren't you taking prashad this morning? <laughs> like this, really. So he was, um, but Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, who was so strict uh, on rules and regulations, he took him as a great Paramahamsa. So, and then there's also the story of Dhruva Maharaj, right? He went all over the universe seeing, seeing uh, saintly people, right? And one of the people he came across uh, was uh, lying on the ground and he said, oh, I'm just a python. I, if food comes in my mouth, so be it. So he's not exactly, you know, following rules and regulations of sadhana bhakti. <laughs> Mind you, we have some brahmacharis like that, I think, also. <laughs> but they, they lie down in the prashadam hall. <laughs> so, so the thing is, uh, yes, you shouldn't be, you know, attached to the process of liberation of mukti, but you should be enter into spontaneous relationship with Krishna. I didn't understand. Huh? You said, you said we should not practice sadhana. Yeah. Well, be that's better than nothing. But I mean, we should have the desire. Let me finish reading this. If one is serious about going back home, back to Godhead, he must consider the mercy. Here's a very important point. The mercy of the Supreme Personality, the summum bonum and chief aim of life. Right? So we do all our sadhana as an offering to Guru, and then we know this will please Krishna. He'll give me some mercy. Right? I'll say that. If one is serious about going back home, back to Godhead, he must consider the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Summum Bonum, and chief aim of life. If he is a father instructing his sons, a spiritual master instructing his disciples, or a king instructing his citizens, he must instruct them as I have advised. Without being angry, he should continue giving instructions even if his disciple, son or citizen is somehow unable to follow his order. Ignorant people who engage in pious and impious activities should be engaged in devotional service by all means. They should always avoid fruit of activity. If one puts into bondage of karmic activity his disciple, son or citizen who is bereft of transcendental vision, how will one profit? It is like leading a blind man to a dark well and then causing him to fall in. Due to ignorance, the materialistic person does not know anything about his real self-interest. People think that getting a house and land and property in this world is his self-interest, but it's nothing to do with that. <coughs> the auspicious path in life. He is simply bound to material enjoyment by lusty desire, and all his plans are made for this purpose. For temporary sense gratification, such a person creates a society of envy, and due to this mentality he plunges into the ocean of suffering. Such a foolish person does not even know about this, right? The materialists are completely ignorant about the laws of karma and why they are suffering. If someone is ignorant and addicted to the path of samsara, how can one who is actually learned, merciful and advanced in spiritual knowledge engage him in fruit of activity and thus further entangle him in material existence? If a blind man is walking down the wrong path, <coughs> how can a gentleman allow him to continue on his way to danger? How can he approve this method? No wise or kind man can allow this. One who cannot deliver his dependence from the path of repeated birth and death should never become a spiritual master, a father, a husband, a mother, or a worshipable demigod. So this is Rishabh Dev is finishing on this point. 
that you should have no position of authority if you cannot liberate people from birth and death. So that's a very clear statement. Uh, that means that all these millions and billions of politicians that we've got on the world, they're all completely bogus. <laughs> Every single one of them is usurping the position. Uh, they have no right to it. Huh? One who cannot deliver his dependents from the path of repeated birth and death, they don't even know that there's such a thing, should never become a spiritual master, father, husband, mother, or worshipable demigod. Yes. So it goes, but that's mainly his thing. Uh, it goes, there's a nice verse here actually, we'll finish. My transcendental body, Satchitananda Vigraha, looks exactly like a human form, but it is not material body, it is inconceivable. I'm not forced by nature to accept a particular type of body. I take on a body by my own sweet will. My heart is also spiritual and I always think of the welfare of my devotees. Therefore within my heart can be found the process of devotional service. So this is very interesting, very poetic, that if you're performing bhakti under direction of Paramahamsa Guru, then you are within the heart of Krishna. Within the heart of Krishna um, is bhakti. What is that verse? Ridayam, mayam, right? Uh, I never learned that sloka. Sadhanam ridayam mayam, ridayam mayam tvaham. Yeah, the saints are within my heart and only I am within the heart of the saints, the sadhus. I know, body, I know nobody but them and they know nobody but me. So this is Krishna. He doesn't know anyone but his devotees. Of course this is an ecstatic statement. Krishna knows everything, but he's particularly paying attention to his devotees, right? Right? I always think of the welfare of my devotees, right? So this is the important point, and this is what's following this section, uh, and you can see there's correspondence of the Vedic literature. Yes, perform sadhana bhakti, become liberated, uh, develop um, all the good qualities of mode of goodness, but uh, by purifying your life. But you must go beyond that. You must desire pure bhakti. And in Kali Yuga, you read Srimad Bhagavatam, you associate devotees and you chant Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And you offer it all to the Mahatma, Mahatsevaya. This is the key point. Because then you'll get the save above. In the spiritual world, everyone is in the mood of service to Radha and Krishna and the devotees. But in the material world, everyone is in the mood of service to their own individual self. That's the big problem. So perform sadhana bhakti, become liberated, and develop love of Godhead uh, as an offering to Guru. That should be the mentality. Sri Guru Charana Padma Ki. Ah, we sing every morning, right? Ye prasade pure sarva arsha. Okay, any questions? Could you say something on the Just a minute. Could I say something? Yeah. <laughs> on the importance? Yes. Could you say something on, on the importance of these days and the day of Intergenetic? Well, every day is Gita Jayanti in one sense. <laughs> because Gita is summation of all the Vedas, right? It's like the Vedanta Sutra of the Mahabharata. The Vedanta Sutra is a summation of all the Upanishads, which are the essence of the four original Vedas. But then 
for Kali Yuga, um, Vyasadeva, he wrote the Mahabharata. So the essence of the Vedas is the Upanishads. So the essence of the fifth Veda, the Mahabharata, is the um, Gita. And it's very interesting, I was just listening to a lecture by Prabhupada, it's a very important point. He says, knowledge doesn't change. He's talking about the modern scientists. They have Newtonian physics, right? Then they have quantum physics, and then Einstein, and they're always changing their theories. This means it's knowledge, it's not knowledge. One and one makes two, today and tomorrow, and next year, and a thousand years later. That's knowledge. Knowledge doesn't change. So all these scientists, by their, it just it take common sense to look at them, and they're all talking nonsense. They're all talking different theories of creation of the universe, how the universe works, how the atoms and molecule works. It's all nonsense. It's all just one mistaken idea, and then somebody defeats that, and another mistaken idea takes the center stage and becomes the fashion. Then that's dis defeated. But Bhagavad Gita, uh, is eternal knowledge. This is the real point. So if you're going to ba base your life you, on your understanding of the universe on uh, something, it should be on the basis of real knowledge. Right? Not some latest fashion like, and also on the political sense they have Socialism, capitalism, globalism, there's always some fashion. Some fashion in the physics world or the chemistry world or the sociological world. This is, so it's easy to see that this is the Maya Shakti. So Gita Jayanti means the appearance of real knowledge within darkness of this material world. I, nobody is changing the Gita. In fact, the whole principle of parampara is no change. So, that's the importance of the Gita. That this is the birth of real knowledge. But the real knowledge uh, should be given birth within the heart. Huh? By the mercy of Guru. So every day can be Gita Jayanti. Huh? Because we will be studying and this this Bhagavad Gita and amazing the purports of Prabhupada and so on for thousands of years, right? And that's why Prabhupada was against editing, because that's the whole material world. Oh, we'll edit the ideas of Einstein to bring them up to date, right? Or Newtonian physics. We have to edit that, those ideas of the atom and molecule to bring them up today. So we can't ha take that attitude to spiritual knowledge because it's transcendental to the material world, it's actual knowledge. This is the world of the Maya Shakti, where everyone is chasing illusion and thinking in illusion. But the transcendental world, everyone is in a state of enlightenment. Now just consider, in the material world everyone is mistaken about the future, reality, what's going to happen, what's happening now, what's the best social system. Everyone is in illusion like that. Uh, but in the spiritual world, the exact opposite, everyone is in a state of enlightenment. Right? <laughs> so, the Bhagavad Gita opens that door, you see. Come out of the darkness into the light. So then it's a very happy day. It's also my birthday. <laughs> According to the sun, to, um, the, the moon, today's my birthday, yeah. Was it? You, care, you, you prepared the way for Bhagavad Gita. 
<laughs> now I was born. I was born 5:36. That in the morning. In the morning. Yeah. yeah. So that's the same time as Bhagavad Gita was spoken, but I was in the wrong place 5,000 years late. Ah, yes. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it's interesting. Mukshida Akadaji, Bhagavad Gita appears, and that the Akadaji called Mukshida. We've just been discussing that through sadhana and cultivating mode of goodness and so on, you can go to the mode of goodness. You can get liberation from passion and ignorance. But the real thing is, from that position, you should go to love of God, Krishna Prem. And that you get from the mercy of Krishna and Guru. You mean from the river of goodness? Huh? From the river of goodness. Yeah, you go from goodness to transcendental understanding. But the main point is, is to make that the goal. This is the important point. You see, whatever you want, Krishna will give you. Yetam mam prapadyante. So if you want love of God, he'll give you that. It's just a matter of desire. But only, the, this is important, you see, only those that are non-envious can desire love of God, you see. If you're envious of Supreme Lord, if you're atheistic, voidistic, Mayavadi, you can't desire to have love of God because your, your mentality is Oh, there is no supreme person. I'm the supreme. This is all nonsense, God. No, there is no God. I'm the God of my life. So you can't. So you get that inspiration, Sadhu Sangha. You see, Bhakti Lata Beach. Because the power of the pure devotee is such that he can cut through all that envy and nonsense and awaken love of God in the heart by his association. Or at least make one interested, you see. And that's the power of the, the Mahabhagavat. They inspire people. And therefore we see when uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod uh, Bhakti Vino Thakur, there was a great reawakening of Krishna consciousness. Then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta came and there was a great awakening. Then Prabhupada came and there was a great spreading of Krishna consciousness. So, our job is to become Paramahamsas. Right? We shouldn't leave it, oh, it's just Rupa Goswami and the great devotees, but in our own little way, we can become devotees also. Right? When Lord Chaitanya is asking us to become a spiritual master, excuse me? Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya is telling you should become a spiritual master. Yes. Yeah. Does it mean you should become a paramount? Well, yes, I guess so. It's easier to be a Paramahansa to not be one. Yeah. <laughs> because you're designed to be a Paramahansa. The spirit soul is designed for love of God. He's equipped, it's his nature, it's Krishna Prem. So it's easy to be yourself, is it not? So if you're in Maya, desiring Maya, then Maya Shakti has got to give you illusion. She's got to give you a material body. She's got to give you a material mind. She's got to supervise the laws of karma. It's so complicated. And then she's got to decide your next life, your next birth. <laughs> right? But if you're a Paramahansa, it's all spontaneous and natural. Right? So it's easier to be a Paramahansa, Mahabhagavat, 
It's easy, and that's why the majority are. They're all in the spiritual world. They're all in the spiritual world, in, enjoying eternal life. It, this is the rubbish dump, this material creation. This is a lot of trouble. Covering the spirit soul with material desire. That is a big waste of time. So, do you agree? It's easier to be a Paramahamsa, yeah. And it's certainly easier on yourself. <laughs> it's not nice to be in the material world and uh, take rebirth. I mean, can you imagine what you've been through in life now, right? You've been to school. <laughs> You've grown up. You've taken exams. You've got sick. You've had toothache. You've had so much. Do you want to go through it all again? Huh? Or do you want to go through it all in a pig's body? No, it's easier to be a pure devotee. It's the natural state. But at the beginning, <coughs> Uh, it's a little tough because we're attached to the Maya Shakti. We're attached to eating, sleeping, mating, defending in this material world. We want to become the lord of matter. We want fame and fortune in this world. We've been miseducated, right, by television, advertising, bad association. So in the beginning it's a little tough. Therefore, Prabhupada made ISKCON so we can all associate and encourage one another and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare So, we'll finish on that point. Any question? Everyone's happy. Until Maya strikes again. <laughs> so, read the Shastra and then your mind will automatically go to Krishna. Thank you all very much.